Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our class today, BC 310 on church and ministry administration. Let's take a moment to pray and then we will uh, get started. I request uh, somebody uh, to pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you glory and honor and praise. Thank you, Jesus, for this time of God. Thank you for your work in the world of church and the institution. We hand over all the students and as we have teachers also, recognize we have developed the police to bring guidance of God and personal guest to follow and head in and to better to work your kingdom. Lord, I will help us to improve our qualities and let this be. When you go home to God's name, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So, last week, last um, few lectures, we were talk talking about um, church staff. How do we take care of the church staff? Today, we're going to go to the next lesson, which is volunteer management. How do we work? Um, how do we uh, properly engage with volunteers? So let me share the PDF and uh, we'll get started. Volunteer management, lesson number eight. How do we work with volunteers? Now, when we look at it from uh, from a scriptural standpoint, uh, Romans chapter 12, verses 4 through 8, uh, the scriptures teaching uh, teaches us, Romans 12, 1 Peter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7, 11 and 12, that God has given different gifts, different graces uh, to his people, which means the church congregation, uh, essentially every believer has some grace, some gift, every believer, you know. So when you look at the church congregation, if you have 100 people, 100 people should be serving, right? Of course, nowadays, maybe 30% 30, 30 will be serving, 70% are just coming and going. But if you look at it, Actually, something is there every each one of them. All the hundred people in the congregation actually have something they can do. They have some grace. In some area, they can serve God. Right? And the Romans 12 says, you know, we are all part of the body, and to each one God has given grace. And uh, first Peter 4, 10, 11 tells us that you know, as each one has received the grace, they must use it. You know, to serve others. So, uh, from a church perspective, our motivation must be we want to get everybody involved. We want to give everybody some opportunity in some place. You know, not everybody can, of course, uh, be on the stage and preach, but, you know, they can, that we should create as many opportunities as possible for every person to serve. And uh, this is where volu uh, volunteers comes in. Okay? That uh, as we encourage people in the congregation to serve, they're going to serve as volunteers. Right? Not all of them are going to leave their jobs or leave what they're doing and join the church staff. They will have their jobs. They will do what they're doing during the week, but they will give some amount of time. You know, maybe four hours, five hours. Some people will give one day. Uh, they may give their skills, they may give their energy, they may give their time uh, in order to serve God. And so as a church, we need to uh, create opportunity for people to serve. Now, we can't force everybody to serve, but some people will come on their own and say, hey, I want to do something. Uh, I, I have this skill. I have so much time. Uh, how can I serve in the church? How can I or serve in the church or even serve outside, but, you know, in the ministry? So... And this is where we should uh, enable this and facilitate this to happen. And this is where volunteers come. 
So what we need to think about is how do we invite and engage volunteers? So uh, that's important, right? How do we invite people and how do we engage them as volunteers? Uh, people should know that we are encouraging them, we're inviting them. Right? They shouldn't think that, uh -huh, Pastor doesn't want me to do anything, he just wants me to sit here. No, no, actually the other opposite is true. We want you to come and do something. Right? Some way, find something that where you can contribute as a volunteer. Right? So that is our motivation. But they should understand that that's where we are coming from. We're not saying just sit and go. No, you please, whatever way you can do something. Too, right? It may be on a Sunday, or it may be some other day of the week when there is some you know work to be done. Uh, so we need to think about how can we invite them, and how can we engage them. You know, yeah. so, so even if somebody wants to volunteer, of course we have to guide them. Uh, we have to oversee them. Uh, we have to manage them, uh, things like that. You know, so there is, if we invite them to do work, it means more work for us also <laughs> to oversee them and guide them. So, but we have to engage them correctly. And to what extent should uh, volunteers serve, right? Because uh, we can't just give them the responsibility because they may not have full the time to handle it completely. They may have time to do a little bit of it. Uh, they may have time to serve in a certain capacity. So we can't just say, I just do the whole thing, right? So we have to think through on to what extent can we involve volunteers in the church or in the Christian organization? And then how do we need to change? How can the church or the Christian organization how can we structure ourselves and adapt the ministries and programs so that there is space for these volunteers to participate, so that volunteers can uh, be a part of it? So uh, uh, this is something we need to think about. Now, one of the things that, that or, or let, let me say this, one of the biggest difficulties is in how the church staff and the volunteers work together. That is a, 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 an area that needs a lot of uh, attention. Because otherwise, this there can be a, a lot of conflict between church staff and volunteers. Church staff will say, they're not doing their job. They're not coming. They're not doing Volunteers say, ah, see, you're getting paid, I'm not getting paid. <laughs> you know, the attitude can be different. You must be doing it. Why are you, made, you making me do it? So, you know, those kinds of uh, things could happen. But we, we are not saying uh, that always happens, but it could happen. And we need to, you know, uh, manage that and make sure that uh, the volunteers will look at church staff with respect. Hey, this particular church staff, uh, he's full time with the church, he's working for the church. He could be, you know, out, he could be like, like the volunteer, you know, working in a corporate office or doing something, earning lots of money. But they, these people who are church staff, they have made a decision, they'll give up those other opportunities and come and be part of the church staff. And that means they are dedicating all their time and their skills in order to do the ministry. So, hey, we have to respect them. You know, so volunteers must look at church staff like that. We have to give them that mindset. Hey, here's here are church. The church staff are people who have sacrificed other opportunities in order to come and work, so that they can come and dedicate themselves for the ministry. They have made a sacrifice. So, volunteers will respect the church staff. Then the church staff must also respect the volunteers because volunteers are busy. They have their own, you know, they have their own responsibilities. They are working for some organizations. They have families, this, that, and all. They have, they have full-time responsibility, I would say. 
But in spite of that, they're willing to come and give their time and efforts to do the ministry. So if both sides, if there is mutual respond, uh, respect, then they will be able to work together. You know, that's, yeah, we respect each other. Each one has their own, you know, uh, their own position, and uh, we can work together uh, and you know, balance it. So, um, one of the things we must do uh, in order to make this happen is involve the church staff in deciding and determining how to engage the volunteers. Okay? I mean, so we like, let the church have decide. You decide how you want to involve the volunteers. So in different areas of ministry, where there are full-time staff, you say, okay, see, you engage the volunteers, but you decide what work you want to give them. You know, uh, what portion of the, the work can be done by a volunteer that you decide? Because the rest of the work you have to do. Right? So we let them, let the church staff decide for their own areas of ministry, they decide. So, for example, uh, that's how we work. Uh, example, catalyst. Uh, catalyst ministry, they're going to the school. We have paid staff, but we have also more volunteers. I don't know what the number is, about five or six people, I think it is now. So, far, so if the team has seven people, two are staff, five are volunteers. So there are more volunteers. And that's how Catalyst Ministries run, is ministries running right now. Of course, we are open to having more staff, but staff means they have to work full time or they are committed. Yeah, that is, you're going to be working Monday to Friday. Volunteers will say, okay, I can give you one day in a week. Uh, I will do the come and help, you know, or I can give half a day. Okay. So that gives, okay, they can volunteer for that amount of time. So I let, example, Pastor Selena is leading that. So I said, okay, you decide how you want to run it. If you want to hire five staff, you can hire five staff. That is up to you. The goal is we must go and serve the students in the schools. That is the goal. That is the ministry. How you want to run it, full-time staff or volunteers, you decide, you lead. So she will decide, you know, whatever. If there are more volunteers, then she'll say, okay, I don't need full-time staff. If there are less volunteers, then you need more staff. And that all that, let them decide. Let the church staff decide. Whoever is responsible for that ministry. So like that, in different areas of ministry, there is a combination of church staff and volunteers. So working together, the person in charge of that ministry, we let them decide how they are going to, you know, do their ministry with the mix of staff and volunteers. Okay. So that they, they they feel like, okay, this is how it can run best. And they know what they can delegate to volunteers, what they need staff to handle. Now, what are some of the benefits of volunteer engagement? Like, you know, if when you have more volunteers from the church or the in the, in the ministry, you know, obviously there are lots of benefits. Uh, one is... Uh, congregation feel they feel part of the church ministry. You know they're not like oh we are just spectators. We just come on Sunday, sit for two hours and go away. You know no no, no this is our church. You know we this is our church. I'm volunteering. Uh, I feel part of this ministry, which is true. That those things will not happen unless these volunteers come and do their part. So it makes immediately that sense of belonging is there. Secondly, it gives people the opportunity to exercise, exercise and nurture their spiritual gifts. So that is what we said when we began, you know, that, that God has given everybody, every believer, God has given gifts and graces. Uh, when we let them participate, then it's actually they're giving, being given the opportunity to exercise and nurture spiritual gifts. They can pray for people, whatever, you know, whatever they can do. You know, it's teaching children's church or the youth or the teens or different areas. Uh, they can exercise their gifts. They can serve. Uh, and the local church 
is able to function as a body. That means every person, every part of the body is doing something. You know, it's not no no body is uh, no part of the body is lying idle. Um, and um, it also is an opportunity to turn, uh, put all the learning and the equipping, put it into practice. So you can listen to the sermon, <laughs> listen to the message. But now, come on, do something with it. You know. So when we give them the opportunity to serve, we're actually telling them and giving them the opportunity to practice the things that they're being taught uh, in, from the word of God. Uh, of course, then it also helps us have a more people to do the work, a larger workforce, to, so to speak. That means there are more people who can carry the load. It doesn't become burdensome on just a few. And uh, we have the benefit that there is no financial expense for volunteers. So volunteers are freely giving their time and things. So uh, the financial expense on the church also, or church or ministry is also less. So these, these are some of the benefits. You know, so the church really stands to benefit from having volunteers participating. But at the same time, we must understand there are limitations. Right? Uh, not everything can be done by volunteers. Right? So example, volunteers are available only for small periods of time. Right? So they can give maybe a few hours on a Sunday. Okay, that's the only time they have. That means the work that we give them to do should fit into that hours. Like, okay, you come, you be a greeter for one hour, <laughs> you know, be a greeter, be a usher, uh, you attend, take care of the parking lot, whatever. Uh, for that amount of time, they can do the work. But we also need church staff, you know, Monday to Friday, we'll be taking care of all the other things that require full-time attention. So volunteers are there. Sometimes volunteers may have other priorities. So, uh, you know, imagine somebody who's working. Right? Okay, he starts volunteering. Suddenly his office says, hey, you need to go for six months. You need to go and work uh, on site in the US. So he'll, he'll say, hey, next six months, <laughs> I'm not here. <laughs> I'm gone. So, okay, you can't say no. His job is there. So he, you know, he, 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 he uh, there may be workplace demands, work-related travel, those things. So uh, obviously, those uh, become those are of higher priority. Uh, another uh, thing is that you know, when working in the church, volunteers need to transition from corporate culture to church culture. That's also important. In corporate culture, you know, you can you know, when you say something, hey, your junior has to do it. <laughs> you're, you're the boss; they have to do it. You know, in church culture, it's slightly different. You, know, you have to be patient. You may, you know, you work a little bit more gently, things like that. So they need to move from corporate culture to church culture. In corporate culture, it's like hey, if you you're in, um, if you're the team leader, everybody listens to you. Here, if you're the team in the church, the team leader, you are going to serve. You're a servant. You know? So that shift needs to be made uh, and so uh, knowing you know how to behave in, in the in the workplace and in the church uh, these they need to make that change and in some cases uh, volunteers may overcome it and under deliver they'll say yes for everything <laughs> but then when you actually see you know they, practically they cannot fulfill it so they may not come to certain things and, you know, they overcome it and under out of zeal, you know, they, they may be very zealous. They want to do something for God. So they commit to everything or uh, they take on a lot of commitment. Uh, but then when it comes around, practically, they're not able to fulfill those commitments. So then it becomes a problem for us on how to manage things and so on. So these are some of the challenges that we face um, with volunteer engagement. Right? Now. Uh, the way we work, and I think in many churches and Christian churches and organizations, um, they, they, have, they will have volunteer teams uh, to handle different things. You know, so that's how we also work. That means uh, there are many areas of ministry where we have identified, we said you know, we can involve volunteers here. Example, in worship ministry. 
Um, our worship team, uh, I don't know what the number of people are right now, maybe between 40 to 60 people, I don't know what the exact number is, but that's the team. Only a few of them are full-time staff, like the two, three, four, what are worship pastors and others, right? The rest are all volunteers. You know, so out of, let's say, about 50 people, maybe five people uh, or less are actually staff. The remaining 45 in the worship team are all volunteers. So it is okay because commitment is Sunday. And not every Sunday, but certain Sundays in the month, whatever you, the person is comfortable. You say, I can do two Sundays a month, fine, that's okay. Some people may do three or some people may do one. Okay. Whatever you're committed, you can, you tell us. That Sunday, you have to come prepared to do your part. You're going to play drums, you're going to play keyboard, you're going to play the guitar, whatever. You come prepared to do your part. So that means that is the level of uh, the commitment. And so that we can engage. But of course, they have to practice and come. And they just can't come in uh, yeah, uh, without practicing. So that, that practicing also, they are committed to doing that. that means so much time they have to give to practice and then come. So uh, things like that. So example, you think about people who handle camera. So we can have volunteers there where they can come. And only on Sunday morning, you're handling a camera. But video editing, that requires a lot of work that happens during Monday to Friday. So for that, you need full-time, somebody full-time, you know, who will be available during the week. They'll edit the sermon videos, they'll create, you know, short video segments, this, that, different things are happening, creating the graphics and all that. So that requires more work, more time, more commitment. So for that, we have full-time stuff. But if it's just something that you know that needs a couple of hours on a Sunday, those are kinds of things that we can give to volunteers. So we need to understand, okay, what can be done by volunteers, what needs dedicated full-time staff, and um, and and then we establish reasonable expectations. That means what we want them to do is we're not asking them to do something they cannot do, you know, that you give so much time. You give so much effort, uh, commitment, and so on, and so they are able to work together. So we look uh, on on uh, on page twenty nine. Uh, I've just listed out uh, different teams, volunteer teams, uh, where or, or different teams where volunteers are actually serving at uh, APC. Now uh, during a Sunday morning church service, uh, of course, the, the, you know we have volunteers who are serving as greeters, uh, parking lot guides, some, some of them will stand and guide the traffic, uh, security assistance, information desk, registration desk, welcome lounge, connect team that is connecting with people, book table, ushers, offertory counting, media presentation, uh, stage decor which happens on you know, certain occasions sound and setup or live streaming live stream moderators online prep um, we used to do it don't do it now um, um, announcements sometimes uh, worship team children's church uh, people are serving there uh, some people also minister the word prayer time other teams that we put together so uh, there are a lot of opportunities, even on a Sunday service, different areas that uh, people can volunteer. Uh, also in the ministry work that happens, like we said, worship, uh, all our life groups are led by volunteers. Uh, volunteers are serving in the youth ministry, Christian professionals, men's, women's, prayer teams, member care, uh, performing arts, you know, publications, Catalyst, college outreach, campus elevates, campus groups, evangelism, missions, camps and conferences, special projects. There are so many ministry areas, volunteers are serving. So, uh, along in many of these areas, they are serving along with church staff. 
they have to work with Shadstam. But these are all areas where volunteers are involved. So they feel very much a part of the whole ministry, what's happening, and, uh, and we're able to work together. Now, I've explained this earlier, the, the hub and spoke model. I'll just quickly, I'll just quickly go through the bottom of page 29. Um, uh, how, you know, so basically we have pastors and ministry leaders who are heading up various ministries. Most of these people are full time with the church. We have in the gray area that represents the church staff. There are uh, people who are working full time for the church. And then the red area is, is representing all the volunteers, lots of volunteers. So taking this whole pool of people, we form many teams. Now all like listed there on Sunday service and the other ministries, they're all teams. But every team, uh, but in each ministry area, there are teams, groups of people, uh, which is a mix of volunteers, church staff, and the pastors. Right? So in every ministry area, almost, I would say, uh, there is a the team is comprised of volunteers, church staff, pastors. They're all working together. Yeah. So that's how all these ministry areas are functioning. Yeah. So it's easy to start up a new ministry area. Just find some uh, the pastor is going to be leading that. Uh, uh, some church staff who need to back them up. Volunteers ready to go. Yeah. So that's how we start off even new ministry areas uh, that, that can be done. So now what I want to do is kind of get into uh, some of the details, you know, on uh, you know, how we manage volunteers, how we work with volunteers uh, at APC, some of the lessons we've learned uh, and so on. So volunteer recruitment, that means getting people to volunteer is a big thing. Right? So what we do is every Sunday, every Sunday. So we want to make it, we want, let me put it like this. We want to let people sign up anytime. You know, we can't say, hey, you come only in Jan, the month of January and sign up. Then they have to wait 12 months to sign up. It's not practical. Anytime somebody wants to volunteer, they can sign up. So what we've done is uh, we have... Uh, uh, created a web page on our website for volunteers. You can, they can just go there and all these areas of ministry are listed. They can just check where they want, submit, and immediately their name, what they've signed up for, comes to us. Right? And then we can reach out to them. Say, hey, thank you. And we, we tell them, hey, just reach out to them. Ask, talk to them. Thank you so much for signing up. Get a little understanding of their background. And then if it's a simple area, okay, you can we can start them off immediately. If they need some training, you know, like if it's, uh, example, audio, video, those things require a little bit of training, then it's okay. You come for next three Sundays, you come, be trained, learn how to do it, then you can start engaging. So those kinds of things, depending on, you know, what, uh, what their area is. But the point is, every Sunday we announce, there's a little slide that comes in the announcement, sign up to be a volunteer. You know, that means we, we are open to this anytime. Anybody can come and we are constantly reminding people, hey, sign up, sign up, sign up. You know? And then in addition to that, uh, we uh, remind people about these opportunities and on different occasions, we might intentionally remind them that, hey, um, there are these opportunities uh, that you can sign up. And uh, so, uh, the uh, we, we provide these opportunities for volunteers uh, to participate. Now, I've just mentioned here on page 29, uh, or page 30, sorry, why some churches, ministries hesitate uh, to enlist volunteers. You know, sometimes uh, churches may say this, oh, uh, are you sure? Should we have them involved? Things like that. And they hesitate. Why? Sometimes they feel threatened by the skills and competencies of volunteers. Obviously, uh, the, these volunteers, people in the congregation, they may be more skilled. You know, they may be professionally much better because they are working, you know, in the industry. So, so hey, they they come, they will tell me what I should be doing. <laughs> you know, 
uh, because they may know much better than me and know more than me and all that. So they feel threatened, the, 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 the church staff or the pastors. Uh, or sometimes they may say volunteers are not as spiritual as us, you know, they don't pray as much as us, so why we should engage them in the ministry. Or sometimes they may feel that, you know, uh, if we engage volunteers, they will take us in the wrong direction. You know, they'll pull us in some, some other direction. So these are all, you know, uh, fears. But I think we need to let go of these fears and uh, we, know, we need to know how to manage things properly. Right? So what if somebody knows more than me or has better skills than me? It's a good thing, right? I can, we can all benefit from their skills, right? The thing is, I must let go of my fear and I must know how to engage them well. And I should relate to them and say, hey, thank you so much for coming and sharing and you know, discuss them with I discuss with them, learn from their skills and so on. So if I let go of my fear, and if I can manage this whole thing well, it'll be good for them and it'll be good for the church. You know, so uh, uh, we should not feel threatened. And uh, yeah, oh, yeah, they may not have as much time as us you know, to spend in prayer in the word, but with them engaging with us, they will become stronger spiritually. So it's actually a win-win. Uh, yeah? So they win, we win. This is a better thing, good thing. And uh, you know, they don't have to pull us in the wrong direction. You know, we can uh, listen to their ideas and then prayerfully say, "No, this is the way we we want to go." as a church, right? So we don't have to be afraid that volunteers will take us in the wrong direction, right? So it, it, we, need, we need to welcome them and not feel threatened uh, to um, engage with them. Right? Um, the next thing is, like I was saying, volunteers, we need to make these opportunities known. And one of the things we've realized is the most effective way for volunteer recruitment is personal contact. What I've noticed is when you announce from the video, nobody will move. But if you go and say, hey, you know, John, can you please help immediately? So I've been waiting for you to ask. I've been waiting for you to ask me to do something. So like we are thinking every Sunday I'm asking you their announcement is coming. <laughs> but they don't feel that as a personal invitation. They think this one announcement is going to everybody. But when you personally say, hey, can you do this? They feel so happy. So that is something we've uh, learned, right? That hey, the, if you want to get more volunteers, you have to go and personally ask, can you please help? In this area, of course, you, you know you have to ask them in the uh, for the right place. So most of them, uh, when we approach them personally, they won't say no. And they will most often they will say yes. I was I've been waiting to do something. I've been waiting to see how to serve God. You know, so uh, personal contact or somebody invite somebody. You know, like somebody in church ask someone else, hey, come and help. That's that either the pastor goes or somebody else goes and say, Hey, you come and help. That is the best way to bring people in as volunteers. So, what we always do, and all our pastors, and we, you know, as even in the first time visitors and so on, when we make calls, we ask people, You know, you, would you like to volunteer? Would you like to serve? Uh, of course, if some people say, you know, I need more time, or that's okay, or they may be going through a very busy, busy season in life. They'd say, okay, right now I'm very busy, but uh, maybe after a few months, I think about, okay, that's right. We can't force them. Um, but we ask, we keep asking. Uh, it's because that's the best way to get them to be involved uh, by personal contact. Then other things, like I mentioned, every Sunday there's an announcement that goes up. Uh, so some people might see it and then, you know, sign up. And um, we have special volunteer drives on certain Sundays, which is okay. Uh, we will, uh, you know, intentionally get people to uh, highlight the volunteer area, uh, areas where people can volunteer and get them to sign up. Or we also, time to time, tell people to share their testimonies. How have they benefited from being volunteers in the church? You know, so 
we get them to share their testimony uh, and then that encourages others to sign up. Um, so enlisting volunteers, the sign-up process is very simple. We have a simple sign-up form online, so anyone can sign up anytime. It's very simple. And then oh, we want to immediately respond. So like if a volunteer signs up and uh, if we don't respond within one few days, they'll think we are not interested. Oh, I signed up. Church didn't give me any opportunity to help. So uh, the, the, when they sign up, the message goes to our events coordinator and immediately his responsibility is to immediately call them and say, hey, you know, talk to them, find out what they want to do and uh, get them involved, get them to start serving. Right? Um, some other things we found useful is to have clearly, clearly written down uh, description of what they need to do so we uh, that's how we put everything in a, in, in a written form uh, for every every ministry area people who are serving them they can read their volunteer guidelines and they'll understand okay this is what i'm expected to do so we have it written down okay? um, so that way there is no confusion and uh, we, uh, we also train them wherever there's need for training uh, we communicate our policies, our guidelines, and to whom they should report to and how they should be accountable. So these are things that we cover uh, as soon as they sign up to serve in a certain area. Before they can actually start serving, these are things we tell them. You know, that means there's no confusion. Hey, you have to come at this time. You have to do this. This is what you must do. This is who you report to. This is what is expected. So otherwise, they you know they may say yes, I'm coming. So I don't know what time I was supposed to come. You know, then you know you have to be here at this time because you know those things have to be taken care of. Those things have to um, be handled. Um, one more thought, and then we'll go for a break. Uh, volunteer demographics. This page thirty-one. You know, um, when we are engaging volunteers. It's also actually an opportunity for us as a church to build bridges across ages and even across uh, the mix of people. So what happens in many churches is older people, they will talk to themselves. Younger people will talk to themselves. <laughs> uh, teenagers, they'll be by themselves. So what you have, you have groups within the church, older people, teenagers, youth. And so how are you going to get them to mix with each other? Because there is a benefit. You know, the younger people, if they work with the older people, they can learn something. And uh, the older people can also learn something from the younger people. Uh, they can benefit from each other's thing. And uh, But if you just leave them like that, they'll all be their own groups. Then same thing if there are uh, people from different uh, regions, for example, uh, people from the north, oh, they'll all seem to stay together. People from the south, they all seem to stay together. I mean, I'm not saying all these examples, but generally it's like that. So how do you mix them up together so that they can be a good, uh, you know, interaction? So volunteering is a good opportunity to do that. So you put little older people, younger people, teenagers, put them all together in the same team so that they work together. Same, you know, same thing with people from different cultures, right? Put them all in the same team, right? Uh, you all work together. So volunteering in church actually becomes an opportunity to bring people across ages and across cultures to bring them closer to each other. It's a great opportunity if you put them in the same teams and let them work together across ages. Well, then they'll all happily learn from each other. So uh, we, we intentionally uh, try to uh, create teams. Now, of course, it cannot happen in every way, every area, but in many areas, you can do that. For example, in children's church, we have uh, little older people, little younger people. They're all serving together. So they have to talk to each other. They have to interact. 
uh, and they have to learn from each other. You know, they have to adapt to each other's uh, way of thinking. Uh, worship team, to some extent, there are some older, older people, younger people, they are working together. So it's a good mix. It's a good, healthy thing to do, uh, to have these people work together. And there's a, it's a great opportunity for learning to happen, mentoring to happen. The older people can care for the younger people and so on and so forth. Right? So it's a great advantage and we need to uh, take, uh, you know, recognize that and make use of that in, in the whole volunteering. Okay, any questions so far? Let me see online. Any questions around following? Yeah, if you have a question. Um, so I just want to ask about, uh, so I come from, I've never seen volunteers this much as, as I have seen in APC. So it was a, it was a shock to me to see uh, the church people volunteering and then they are the church and they are the one who is working. <laughs> so it was so different for me. So uh, how do we actually implement in a place where, where there have never been a volunteer? Uh, I have seen churches uh, where they don't actually they don't trust each other uh, that to give a position to someone they they don't trust so mostly people in authority or the pastor uh, they are the one who takes care of everything that happens in the church as far as i have seen in many churches so uh, how do we implement it over in those places do we have to preach about it or uh, i i just want to know how do we start up like uh, there should be volunteers in church. The idea of volunteers itself, I have, I haven't seen in some churches uh, in Tamil Nadu. So, how do you actually give that encouragement or <laughs> anything? Yeah. yeah, very, very, very good question. And um, so, I think the first step is that. Uh, the mindset of the leaders, the pastors, should change. The pastors should actually see that this is God's will. So it's not just uh, you know about whether the church will benefit or not. No, this is God's plan. That is why God has given gifts and graces to everybody. Right? He's not given gifts and grace only to the pastor. The Bible says, like we saw, in, uh, we started off with the scriptures in Romans 12, 1 Peter 4, uh, Ephesians 4, verse 7. God has given gifts and graces to every person. Different, different gifts and graces. So therefore, it now becomes the pastor's responsibility, the leadership responsibility, to actually give them the opportunity to use those gifts. Otherwise, you know, what God has put in them is going wasted. It's not being utilized for the purpose of God. So by not giving opportunity, we are actually disregarding God's gift and grace in the lives of all those people. So first thing I would say is uh, the mindset of the leaders, the past should change. That they need to realize that this is actually something I have to do, I have to do to honor God. Then, of course, the mindset of the people also need to change. Uh, the mindset of the people, uh, in, in many cases, is, oh, I just have to come and attend church and go away. I don't have anything to contribute. So people also need to know, no, no, no. Actually, God has put something in you. God has given you certain gifts and grace. Now you need to discover it. You need to use it to serve God and serve people. So even the thought process, the thinking of the people must change. And that thinking happens through the preaching of the word. Right, through the preaching of the word, we bring out these scriptures and say, hey, God has given all of us gifts and graces. God has given all of you gifts and graces. And you need to start using it in whatever way you can. And you are a minister. So like at APC, we'd say, every believer is a minister. 
That means you can do something to serve God. When we say minister, doesn't mean you have to become a reverend or <laughs> bishop or something. Minister simply means serve. So everyone can serve. Um, then, so that's how we change the mindset, right? So once the understanding is shifted or changed, then we have to think about the practical ways how to go about it. Which is, you know, simple thing is form teams. Let volunteers uh, don't make it too difficult. Don't make it too hard. Then they won't serve. Keep it, keep the entry barrier very simple. You want to serve as an usher? Okay. All you have to do is come at this time, stand here, and do this. Keep it very simple. Do you want to serve as a greeter? Okay, very simple. You have to come at this time, be here, smile and shake hands, and welcome people to the church. Finished. You know, so try to keep things very simple. And of course, in certain areas, you need they need a little bit more work. Like if you're going to serve in children's church or teens or youth, there you have to come prepared with the lesson that you're going to teach and all those things. Of course, uh, elicit it. So, but in a, you know, make it easy for them to come and volunteer itself. And so slowly you build that culture over time, and then you'll have a you know a, a very healthy congregation. Mm -hmm. The early church, yes. Members. members, number how many people? So each every members they are doing as a percent. Correct. That is as we told that the pastor the leader many such as right. So yeah, in broad mind. So the churches of the pastor that I got to stay. They wanted to bring their own family and lead to the particular. Mm. And all of us are neglected, gifted, all people are there. That's the main piece of the church. Uh, our pastors are not increasing. Yes, you told the threat of the mm. uh, followers. People. So people are loyal, more uh, talented than pastors. Mm. Mm. That is the real challenge for pastor. But as you told you, we have to change our minds. Because we are here to serve and give opportunity. One of the main thing I was tired is. Because there are a lot of people in this world and there are different faith and different mm -hmm. faith. All those things, the people are very highly educated and they have been good. But and I'm worried about where the church is not mad to, to bring them into the city. Mm -hmm. We have to judge me to be able to engage. Right. Uh, the common sense. So we are, we are able to provide according to their understanding right. the gospel and the so, right. As we go, we have to change this mindset. Yeah. So we are mm. big part of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what um what Pastor John yeah. you, you know, you know, so you know we're sharing here in the classroom was that um, yeah, he's just sharing his observation. That um, uh, the mindset of the leaders need to change uh, to engage people in the in the congregation. Typically, it's the the leader thinks about just themselves rather than the whole congregation. Also, feels threatened that uh, people in the congregation may be more skilled than himself. So that's why they don't tend to engage people. Yeah, so. For the benefit of online students. <laughs> okay, let's go for a break. Uh, we'll go for a 10 minute break and we'll be back in 10 minutes and continue our class. Thank you.